Absolutely, you're good to go. Great, thank you. So, uh, hi everyone, and, and thanks very much for this uh, opportunity. What I'll be uh, speaking on really is just be zooming in onto what a management system can do to to help manage all your ESG data. So that's that's what I'm going to focus on. It's it's the uh, type of offering our business does, but it's uh, it's nice to share the experience I've had on on actually what a management system can do with all this ESG data and reporting that's um, that's needed these days. So the topics I'll touch on really managing that data, how you then can analyze and, and report to the required uh, reporting um, initiatives or requirements. And then some of the advantages that I will share with you that an ESG management system can bring and then share also some of the lessons we've learned from a um, implementation. And there definitely are some lessons we learn as we go along. Okay, so, so firstly, just on the, uh, the data part. So it's important to realize right up front which, why you need to gather data and what get data you need to gather. Is it a specific reporting requirement um, for a specific standard? Is it uh, just for your internal sustainability reporting? You know, what are the drivers for getting that data? So you've got to understand what is that right data that you need to gather. An important exercise also to undertake up front is understanding your material risks. And we've learned this as well, helping companies um, with, with managing ESG is, is understand those material risks that are relevant to your business and then make sure that the metrics related to those are gathered and that may well meet then some of those standards and some of those indicators within standards. So firstly, identify what data you need. And then where does that data reside and how do you acquire that data? Now, I think all of us who have... Um, worked with ESG or helped report with ESG or advised or consulted to, to businesses on ESG, realized that data gathering is a huge part of this exercise. And there's a range of maturity of businesses from those where data resides in many different systems, spreadsheets, uh, different sites, different departments to, to those that are actually have it more under control where it's much more centralized. But the point is, acquiring data is taking up a huge amount of, of time. A uh, recent uh, experience we've had is uh, with a food company based here in South Africa is that the, the head of sustainability was saying that it takes him three weeks of the month just to gather the data to be able to report. And that's, that's not acceptable. So, you know, upfront, understand where this data resides, how, uh, what form this data is. Is it a continuous data that gets fed or is it sort of once or um, type of, of responses. And then, you know, where is that data stored? Is it warehouses? As I said, is it sort of separate spreadsheets and at different sites? So all of this needs to be understood before you can help an organization uh, combine this and, uh, and, and help them report and understand that data. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit later on about, it's not just about reporting, it's about uh, using that data, getting value out the data. Okay, and then as important is, and what we're seeing more and more questions about is, a, is, is the assurance or the quality aspects of that data. So the ability to, for a system to identify or pick up when data is not quite conforming perhaps to uh, previous sets of data or to preset thresholds or limits. And there's various ways that this can be done. It can, uh, you, you know, uh, checks can be done against a variation and you can maybe set limits to the degree of variation you want uh, identified. You know, anomalies, maybe it's laboratory data for, you know, water laboratory data, for example. And uh, if there's a spike in a particular parameter, I mean, that is an anomaly that the system picks up and flags for you. You can go investigate, was it, uh, you know, legit or not? And also the ability that a system could perhaps alert or notify a relevant responsible person. And that, you know, that, that could be different people for different sets of, of data. So all of that is useful quality assurance that we are seeing companies asking more and more about. The last point um, I just want to touch on under the quality assurance, the collaboration and verification. And 
you know, experience that we've had even through uh, through the various lockdown situations that I think most of us have been um, through, is this collaboration has become a huge thing. You know, how do we collaborate and um, comment on information or a presentation or, or something remotely? And that same concept can be applied to data. You know, how do we how can we comment collaborate on a set of data to make sure it is correct? comment on it um, and then obviously approve it by the right people. So collaboration is becoming, in our view, um, a very important thing. And then you move on to the security of the system, how secure is that data and who has access to it and you can set different restrictions. So all of that is important aspects to consider just regarding the gathering of data. And then it comes on to the reporting aspect. Now, it's not just about that data, it's also about being able to interpret it, analyze it, and, and perform various functions. For example, you might be gathering, and, and a lot has been spoken about uh, carbon, so we can stick with that trend. You know, what is your diesel consumption or electricity consumption? But that has to be turned into a carbon uh, dioxide footprint, a carbon dioxide equivalent, or you know, your, your carbon footprint. And that's what needs to re be reported on. So the system will be useful to have some sort of computation components uh, or, or, or um, calculation engines behind it. Another example, just water consumption. You know, what are the inputs versus the outputs? Calculate that consumption because you're reporting um, asks for what is your consumption. And then the uh, added value, things like displaying that data, understanding trends, understanding your data against target set so that visually you can really see what's happening. Now, this is now touching what I wanted to come back to or look back to is it's not just about reporting, it's also understanding your situation and getting value out of the data. And then we'll talk about the risks in a moment. So that's the interpretation part. You get your, uh, the generation of a report and most companies just expect, you know, push a button, I wanna see a report. Sounds very easy, it's not always that easy, um, but understanding then what report is needed for their purposes. Is it a, um, a report, for example, a GRI related report, or is it more complex or simple than that? So the system, again, useful if it can generate that right type of outputs. The last point I put there just about viewing the data, uh, different levels within an organization would like to see different data, perhaps it's you know really the raw data at a site level or consolidated or rolled up for more of a corporate view. So again, different levels within an organization would like to see different aspects or interpretation of that data. So some of the advantages of a, let's call it a central management system or an ESG management system. It allows for the full process to be considered. So from gathering that data right through to the final reporting, viewing that data. Centrally, it's one system that, that data can be securely stored. You're, you're breaking down those silos between perhaps the different risk types between safety, environment and health so that it's more of a holistic view of all your risks. It does reduce that time consuming component of trying to gather data. Let me touch on, expand on that point. I mean, I'm as position here within my company in the sustainability, I've been tasked with helping our invest, uh, the investors in our company gather certain data. And I'm finding that very difficult within even our organization, looking at a, perhaps the HR system and the financial system to try gauge who's traveled where and, and, and so forth. And I'm finding that difficult and I can just imagine larger companies are finding it um, many times harder. So that this time of gathering data is a huge thing that uh, you know, needs to, to be overcome. And then on the risk side, so there I just want to expand a little bit to say, it's one thing gathering data, reporting on data, but there has been a shift and, I, and I've definitely seen it where now we want to understand that data. So it loops back to basically your health, safety, environmental risks, or your, your governance of the whole of your company. Use that data to understand those risks. At the end of the day, it's about risk management. So I am seeing that shift from, right, let's just put in a reporting type system to adding the extra value of, right, you know, what are these underlying risks? 
let's see it. How can we manage it? And overall, we'll just lower a whole ESG profile, risk profile, let's call it that. Okay, and then some of the other the points I've, I've put down there, uh, you know, create value beyond the reporting, uh, generate, your, generate those re required reports or graphs or whatever you need. If your system is uh, flexible, configurable, it certainly helps. Every company has different requirements. And the whole transparency and accountability comes through when there is a central system. An external auditor, third parties can come in and it makes it a lot easier for them to understand how you're managing your ESG if it is done through a system. Um, it might not always be one system, it could be few, but you know, through some sort of management system. And then a few examples of possible outputs. This is a, 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 a shot of some of the dashboards that uh, we generate. And in this particular example, it's you know, showing the degree of, uh, or through the questionnaires, those standards, ESG standards are turned into questions. And then you can gauge through you know, different divisions within your company or different operations globally. You know, how are they um, progressing with that, with answering that questionnaire so that you can get your standard uh, answers or answers to report against a certain standard. So you can then gauge progress on answering those questionnaires. Another example, the scoring, you know, based on an answer set, you can assign a score to it and then see from division to division or operation to operation how the scoring is, um, is comparing and, and then who's doing well, who's not doing well, which, which areas perhaps need attention. So various ways data can be presented to help you understand the situation. So those are just some of the examples, again, that a, a, a management system can help you with. And then on to, to some lessons learned, which is really worth sharing. So one of our first projects was um, actually to an investor, not, not to an operation themselves, but it was to an investor company for one of their uh, funds, which had uh, a dozen or so companies within that fund. And what we realized some of the challenges while we were going through this process is, you know, their reporting requirements and their graphical display of information was quite different to, you know, what, what we thought was a standard. So those changes had to be made. Important to realize to, you know, upfront understand what those outputs need. And you almost want to work back from those outputs those uh, within companies, the, the, the users or the, the, those responsible people to gather the data, you know, needed extra training and um, awareness on what it's about and how to gather that data. So it was just quite immature, and then we needed to get those uh, respective people trained up. And then the whole ESG equivalency, which has been touched on in a, on a few talks about. Uh, you know, well, there's five or six standards we need to report on. How do we manage equivalency within a system? So that, uh, and then make sure we can solve that problem with basically linking N metric or A indicator to various standards so that you, you literally, you know, answering it once and you can report to a variety of, of standards. So those are some of the challenges we had to overcome. And to look back to some of the points I raised in the beginning, this materiality assessments, it's very important to perform upfront so that you are not only gathering the data to what's material to your company and reporting on it, but also managing those risks. So again, that comes back to sort of lowering your whole ESG risk profile. This collaboration, we've realized more and more that it's very useful to have that ability. And the ESG standard agnostic, what we mean there is Yes, there are management systems that will help you report to a standard, be it a, a GRI or SASB or, or any others. However, it does bring in a lot of advantages if it's not specific to a standard that it can, sort of, you can generate a report or um, an output that can meet a variety of, of standards. So those were some of the learnings that we would take forward and important, I think, for those also listening in, if you in that game to realize you know, these are some of the issues that's, um, that we've learned that can maybe apply. And I think that's it. So thank you very much. I'll uh, open it up to questions. Fantastic, Robin. Thank you so much. That was
Excellent. Uh, we have a question coming in, which is the one that is very fundamental, but it's an important one. So what is the purpose of risk management? Well, you know, literally every business needs to manage risk at the end of the day. And, and those risks can be uh, stemming from a variety of, of, of drivers, be it social related, governance related or environmental related. So if you're not going to manage risk, you are opening yourself up to, um, you know, to, to stress situations. So in my view, it, it does come back to just managing that risk to ensure the sustainability of your, your business. So in my view, risk sort of underpins your whole business management. And another question was, how do we make risk management fun and sexy? <laughs> Sorry, say that on again, please. How do we make risk management fun? <laughs> yeah, good question. I, uh, I'm not sure. I, uh, I don't work in the risk area sort of uh, as a focus. Um, how to make it fun? Well, what's good to see is then solving those risks, you know, identifying them solving them and seeing the, the sort of continual improvement uh, it probably can be very satisfying that you can uh, get that under control so to make it fun and sexy i'm <laughs> not too sure but i think there's a great sense of satisfaction if you can get that right and uh, be a huge contributor to the, the success of your business or sustainability of your business if you can get risk management right and look management systems have a place there's other ways to manage risk but uh, um, it's probably a matter of, yeah, get it right and you, you can feel very satisfied. That's a great answer. Um, Robin, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, a round of applause uh, virtually. Pleasure. Thank you, everyone. That was a really great presentation. Um,